Welcome to this series of readings and reflections for Holy Week, in which you are invited to prayerfully engage with the events of that last week in Jerusalem. I will be posting a YouTube video to accompany this, and on Sundays signposting you to songs on YouTube that may help you during Holy Week. It would be helpful if you have a Bible that you can read, and you may have received by email the notes of what I'm going to share with you, and you're welcome to follow them. Jesus knew and loved Jerusalem. He first visited the city as a child with his parents who made a sacrificial offering on his behalf, Luke 2, 22 to 24, and returned every year with pilgrims from Nazareth in Galilee to celebrate the Jewish festivals. On one occasion, when he was still a child, his parents lost him. They couldn't find him. They were losing his, their mind. He wasn't there. He wasn't among the other pilgrims returning to Galilee. And they searched for him for days. And when they found him, he was in the temple courts, listening and engaging the teachers in conversation. He was surprised at their concern and said to them, Surely you knew I would be in my father's house. On his way to Jerusalem with the pilgrims, they would have sung the pilgrim psalms. Pilgrimage is popular. I have friends who have walked the Camino to Santiago de Compostela in northern Spain, which takes about six weeks. Next year, I'm hoping to walk from Melrose in the Scottish borders to Holy Island, and you can walk across the mud when the tide has ebbed away, walking from the mainland to Holy Island. Perhaps at New North Road we'll plan to share in a pilgrimage together. Jesus was familiar with the pilgrimage to Jerusalem. And together with the pilgrims, he would have sung the psalms. Psalms like Psalm 87 that says, Glorious things are spoken of you, Zion, city of our God. Or Psalm 122, I was glad when they said to me, Let us go to the house of the Lord. Jesus knew and loved Jerusalem, but he also knew it was a place of danger. You can read in Luke 13, verse 31 to 35, that some Pharisees warned him to avoid Jerusalem, but he refused. He replied that Jerusalem is the place where all God's prophets are killed. Yet his heart was full of love for the city, and he yearned to gather her people beneath the shadow of God's wings. He warned that the temple itself would be abandoned. And although it was a magnificent building that his disciples were in awe of, he told them bluntly that it would be raised to the ground, that not one stone would remain on another. Mark 13, 1 and 2. When he entered Jerusalem on Palm Sunday, with the pilgrims who had come to celebrate Passover, the people shouted, Hosanna, which means, Lord, save us. Jesus was fulfilling the words of the prophet Zechariah. In 9 verse 9 it says, See, your king is coming in triumph. In victory he has humility and rides on a donkey. The people greeted him as the coming king. On Palm Sunday, Jesus walked about the temple and saw what was happening there. But because it was too late, he and his disciples left the city to stay in Bethany. Probably, although we can't be certain, at the home of Mary, Martha and Lazarus where there was good food 
good conversation, a place of welcome where he could sleep. On Monday, he returned to Jerusalem. So I'll give you a moment while I check the saucepans to read Mark 11, verse 12 to 19. Mark 11, verse 12 to 19. On the following day, when they came from Bethany, he was hungry. Seeing in the distance a fig tree and leaf, he went to see if he would find any fruit on it. But it was not the season for figs. He said to it, May no one eat of your fruit again. And his disciples heard him. Then they entered Jerusalem and found the temple where he began to drive out all who were selling or buying, overturning the tables of the money changers and the seats of all who sold doves. And he would not allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He was teaching and saying, Is it not written, My house should be called a house of prayer? for all nations, but you have made it a den of robbers. When the chief priests and the scribes heard it, they started searching for a way to kill him. For they were afraid of him because the whole crowd was spellbound by his teaching. And when evening came, Jesus and his disciples went out of the city now, some background may be helpful. The temple had three courts. The outer court, where these events happened, were open to people of all nations. In other words, you didn't need to be a Jew to enter this court. It was deliberately intended to be a place for everyone. Many people would have said the traders in the temple were doing good things. They were supplying birds that could be offered as a sacrificial gift, as the law of Moses required, just as Mary and Joseph had done when Jesus was born. They were also changing Roman coins from the idolatrous image of the Roman emperor, who claimed to be a god, for temple coins that people could place in the temple offering. Yet it was going wrong because the traders were taking advantage of people, overcharging them, hence Jesus calling them out for theft, and their tables were cluttering up the space that was intended for people to pray in. It was giving them no elbow room. No wonder Jesus was angry. When he turns the tables over, he quotes the scriptures. And I welcome you to read them in Isaiah 56, verse 7, and Jeremiah, verse 7 to 11. So I invite you to reflect on these questions. I wonder what you feel about what Jesus does. Although turning the traitor's temples over was a bold, dramatic and physical act that may have alarmed some people, could you describe it as an act of love? The New Testament describes each of us as a temple of the Holy Spirit. Jesus was clearing the clutter that prevented people praying. I wonder what hinders you from praying. I'll give you a moment to reflect on those questions.
So there's an exercise. Take a moment to be honest with God and ask the Holy Spirit to convict you and open your eyes to things that hinder you from meeting God in prayer. These may include your attitude to someone else, refusing to forgive or be forgiven, distractions or disappointing experiences in your past. Be honest with God and invite the Holy Spirit to turn these tables over and create the space in your soul for you to meet God and for your heart to be filled with confidence and hope. Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of God, you entered Jerusalem and cleared the clutter in the temple so people could pray. We are the temples of your Holy Spirit. In this Holy Week, clear away the clutter from my soul. Purge me of all that hinders me from meeting with you. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on me. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on me. Jesus, Son of God, grant me your peace. Holy Spirit of God, guide me through this Holy Week and speak to my soul that I may see Jesus more clearly, follow him more nearly, and love him more dearly, day by day. Amen. I encourage you to use the notes that have been sent to you and you will see they come with a link to a song from the Iona community called Jesus Christ is Waiting, Waiting in the Streets. And I'll look forward to um, preparing another video for tomorrow which I hope will bless you as you walk with Jesus through through these events of Holy Week. God bless you. Bye.